Hello and welcome <clears throat> to this study in Acts as we continue to just work our way through. It's not really a study so much as it is a devotion, just reflecting upon what we see in the life of the early church and how perhaps we can model our lives after it, things that we can learn both from what goes well and what goes wrong. So as we look at this, we're looking at Acts chapter 5 verses 17 to the end of the chapter again. Uh, yesterday we looked at the beginning portion and we're going to come back and look at another section today. But let me just pray and then read the entire passage and then make some thoughts about it. So Father, again, give us ears to hear. Give us minds to comprehend. Give us hearts that are open and obedient to you. Glorify yourself in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we go. But the priest, the high priest, rose up, and all who were with him, that is the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. So you get thrown in prison for proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. You get released from prison by an angel who tells you to go and do what you just did um, in order to uh, get thrown in prison. And they go and they do it. I love the obedience of them. So now we move on. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Sorry, I already got that. Now, when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in prison. So they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. <laughs> now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody. And a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him, and he too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is a man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they, the apostles, left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. This is just a great passage of scripture, but um, I wanted to go back up and look at uh, these verses in about verse 21 and following. So the, the apostles have been arrested 
thrown in jail, released from jail, told by the angel to go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So they do so. They go and they enter the temple precincts, probably around Solomon's portico, and they spend time teaching the people about Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the morning rises, the Sanhedrin gathers, and they get everything in order so that they can have their trial of the apostles. They send to the prison, uh, soldiers to the prison to have them brought. <laughs> Lo and behold, when the soldiers open the locked doors with soldiers standing in front of them, there's no one in there. <laughs> oh, man. That had to have been very confusing to them. And now it says the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words. They were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Um, the, the guards were probably greatly perplexed because I, they could be put to death because someone who had been under their watch, under their guard, showed up missing. <laughs> that could be a problem. On the other hand, the authorities, the chief priest and the, uh, the high priest and the others who were looking for them were probably, oh man, now what? We've it, Things just keep going from bad to worse. What's going to happen now? They're, they're wondering, you know, what new turn this story is taking and what, what fire they're going to have to put out now. And as they're thinking about that, <laughs> someone comes in and says, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. So you throw them in prison for teaching and they get out of prison and they go right back to doing it. And so they send the captain with the officers and they bring them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. So what do we do with this? How does this impact our lives? Well, first of all, I just want you to know that you need to be about doing whatever it is that God has called you to do and leave the results to him. Leave the consequences to him. If God tells you to do something, do it. I know that sometimes we can fear what others may think or what others may say or what others may do. And we need to get over that and just be concerned about what God wants us to do. The apostles are a great example to us here. Their preaching is the reason they got thrown in prison. Their obedience to God is the reason that God released them from prison. They were told then to, to keep doing what you've been doing. So they go back and they do what they're supposed to do. And now they're getting arrested all over again. I mean, it's kind of like a yo-yo. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. And things are going to get worse. I, I do know that, you know, I, I have to be really careful that just because we're being obedient to Jesus doesn't mean we're always going to be released from prison. But what it does mean is that if we are obeying God, we can have a clear conscience, we can rest easy, and we'll know that whatever happens, God is over all and working in and through all. So don't worry about the people. See, that's what the captain and the officers and the high priest and all of those, they were worried about the people and what the people would think. We need to be worried about what God wants and what God thinks. And then just trust him with everything else. As Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things, he'll take care of them. It doesn't mean you'll get out alive. It doesn't mean you'll get out without persecution. It simply means that God's got this and we can trust him with it. Do what he's asked you to do today and let him worry about tomorrow. For today has enough trouble of its own. Father God, help us to be obedient children to you. 
Help us to do today what you've called us to do. And help us to leave everything in your hands so that whatever happens, whether we get thrown in prison, whether we get mocked, whether we get persecuted, or whether you do amazing, glorious things that expand and grow your kingdom through us, we will just be able to know that all we've been doing is what you wanted us to do. Lord, help us not to worry about what people think, but what you think. In Jesus' name, amen.